Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. I need a haircut, but I don't care. We're gonna do the Constitution for Dummies series, batter off at Amendment 9, one of the more mysterious amendments in the first 10. So, wherever you stand on the issues, we wanna make sure, whether you're right, center, left, or cray cray, that you are smart, you're standing smart on the issues. So giddy up for learning, I'm raising the roof, and here we go, the Ninth Amendment. All right, so let's read the words first. Shazam. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. So the origins of that amendment actually spring from kind of the uh, the ratification uh, uh, debate that we were having between the feds and the anti-feds. Of course, the anti-feds want the Bill of Rights, and Madison and Hamilton are saying that we really don't need the Bill of Rights. Hamilton in Fed 84 states that by writing down our liberty, it's in a sense saying we know what liberty is, we're going to write it down, and therefore we're guaranteeing liberty. And that would be a mistake, Hamilton argues, by saying that in a sense we're limiting our liberty by doing that, by writing it down. So in response to that, we have the Ninth Amendment, which basically says if we didn't write it down, if it's not in one through eight, that doesn't mean that there can't be other rights that are retained by the people. Of course, now the argument becomes what does that mean, retained by the people? So the Ninth Amendment can be used by progressives as, in a sense, an accelerator of the Fourteenth Amendment. No state shall deny its citizens equal protection under the law. So if you take an issue which is controversial to some, I guess, would be gay marriage. Gay marriage, marriage isn't in the first eight amendments. In fact, it's considered to be a reserved right protected by the Tenth Amendment. It's up to the states. But if we as a society judge that that's a human right, that it's substantive democracy, that we're born with that liberty to marry who we want, that no state can use its power to deny that equal protection, 14th Amendment, and we can't use the Constitution and enumerated rights, just the fact it's not an enumerated right, to deny that right. Others on the right, Justice Bork, who uh, was denied a uh, spot on the Supreme Court, he called the Ninth Amendment kind of an ink blot that you really could see whatever you wanted to in it. Now, has the Ninth Amendment been used exclusively by the court? No. But it has been used as a rationalization in certain concurrent decisions. So, for instance, in Griswold versus Connecticut, 1966, I could be wrong, basically contraceptives. Connecticut has a state law which states that couples, people, can't buy contraceptives. And the Supreme Court ruled that there was a kind of a guaranteed right of privacy in the Fourth Amendment, and some of the justices argued that privacy could be Ninth Amendment. Just because we didn't write down that privacy is a guaranteed amendment, we can't deny it because we didn't write it down. Many people see the Ninth Amendment really not as a guarantee of rights in the Constitution, but more of kind of a how-to directional manual amendment of how we should be reading the previous amendments in light of the Constitution and natural rights. Libertarians see the Ninth Amendment kind of like an accelerator of liberty, basically saying that if there's any question, if there's a lower court decision, or if there's a jury decision that um, puts into question one of the first eight Bill of Rights, that the court, using the Ninth Amendment, should always side on the side of liberty, really expanding the Bill of Rights into more of a loose interpretational um, context. So that's basically the Ninth Amendment for you guys, whether you see it more as kind of protecting the states and the people's ability through their legislators to come up with new rights that would be protected, or you see it as an issue of substantive democracy, that uh, we're born with liberty, and just because we didn't write it down when we wrote the Bill of Rights doesn't mean that we can allow majority populations and large factions to deny the people that right. So there you go, there's the Ninth Amendment. I don't know! Why don't you put down in the comments below what you think the Ninth Amendment means, because I'm not the master guru of knowing what it means. All I know is what it says, and then we can deal with interpretations. So giddy up, there you go. Why don't you click? You know who you should click? Click Noam Chomsky! You click Noam Chomsky, and you're going to be taken to the Constitution for Dummies series. Don't you want to go right now? Of course you do. And if you click right here, this button, we should grab something else. Click Uncle Sam. If you click Uncle Sam, look at it, it's so tempting to click, you will be able to go and subscribe to Hip Hughes History. That would be awesome. 
And check the description below for other links and EDU channels that are going to grow your brain 10 times its size. You know what I'm going to say. Whatever you're doing, guys, where your attention goes, your energy flows. All right, that's it for me. See you on out. Bye.